If we are employed and our boss or supervisor asks us to do something, odds are we check to see whether or not what they ask us to do is, is within our job description. If not, we may not be doing it. We might run to our union steward. So we recognize that our obedience to our boss may have little to do with our love for her or him. Likewise, hundreds of years ago, slaves on plantations would do what the slave owner was asking for, and it had nothing to do <clears throat> with their love for the land owner. It had a lot to do with extortion, coercion, torture, a lot of bad stuff. So in this gospel passage, <clears throat> when Jesus comes along and makes a suggestion that we are supposed to be obedient to the will of God if we love God, we can sense that there's perhaps more to the story than just that. That we recognize that oftentimes our obedience is, comes from a lot of mixed motives. Jesus' words seem a bit challenging, and actually it seems counterintuitive. It is Jesus who suggests that we learn how to love unconditionally. And here it is, he seems to be putting a condition on the Father's love for us. Jesus himself suggested that to love those who love us is of little virtue, that we really need to be able to love those that don't love us, that we may not like, that we may not get along with, may be actually our enemy. So what is Jesus saying here? Is it a complete contradiction? Well, not entirely. There's more to it than that. Oftentimes we have to appreciate that uh, our behaviors have a lot of different mixed motives. And we recognize that if we do love people, we form a relationship with him or her. And part of forming a relationship is a submission of our will to their will, to do what they like to do from time to time, to provide for their needs, to sacrifice at some level for the sake of the other person. So when we are paying attention to what their needs are or their desires are. It may sound like obedience, but it's motivated by something entirely differently. We know this from human experience, so we shouldn't be too harsh with Jesus' words now. It is Jesus that gives us this wonderful parable of the prodigal son. And here it is, we have two brothers acting completely differently, and neither one of them really understand what it means to be in relationship with the father. If they had been more conscious, both of them, the odds are the younger brother would not have asked for the inheritance before his father was dead. He probably wouldn't have run off because he recognized you couldn't buy your friends. He probably would have been doing the whole thing, many things quite differently. As well as the older brother would have appreciated that he might still have been obedient to what the father asked him to do from time to time, but it wouldn't have been out of a means of earning the father's love, but rather an appreciation for the wisdom of what the father was asking him to do tending for the estate, taking care of the animals or the crops or whatever it is, there's a truth and wisdom to that that comes from the father's experience. And it's not a matter of just doing so because he loves his father. There's a certain wisdom, a certain truth that shouldn't be denied. So as opposed to thinking of this as slavish obedience to God's commandment as a, out of a strict submission to his authority, Perhaps it's a, an appreciation for the wisdom that he hopes to share with us. Jesus says that we are his friends because he shares what he hears from the Father with us, as opposed to treating us like, like slaves that just gives us raw commands without an understanding of why we're doing what we're doing. I'm not sure that we necessarily slide onto the friend side and away from the slave side from time to time. We tend to be quite stupid as human beings. And it's an opportunity for us to slow down, wake up, smell the coffee, and pay attention to the truth that's out there. When we become more conscious of what is happening in our world and in our relationships, we grow in those relationships. We grow deeper in love. And therefore, it's not a matter of slavish obedience to the Father. It's a deepening of our relationship with our God who loves us first.